she talks. Wait. Dating as a millennial is trash. Then again, I think at this stage in humanity, dating as any person from any generation is garbage. I turn like doorknobs. Those of you who have been with me for a while know that although a bitch is uber private, I have been on and off the market during my YouTube life. And I've done a couple videos about my less than positive experiences in the dating pool. To sum those videos up in case you miss them, although I have only my perspective and my experiences, how should I put this? This may be the worst time ever in the history of human courtship, and I think I know why. There are many things that make dating today especially challenging for black women, but that deserves its own discussion. Let me know if you guys want me to get into that some other time. But there are certain widespread behavioral changes that I've clocked over the past five to 10 years during and due to this age of social media, which I think have doomed many of us to be forever alone and stuff like that. For starters, the way we even find people to possibly date has changed uh, dramatically. Dating sites were almost exclusively for skeezers and weirdos as recently as 10 years ago, but the advent of smartphones and dating apps shifted dating sites to the mainstream. Meeting someone online became a lot less taboo because it was so much more accessible, practical, and convenient. You can download a dating app, set up your profile, and be looking through possible suitors on your phone all in under five minutes. Far easier than having to get yourself looking correct, schlep all the way to the club, all in the hopes that there'll be even one person who tickles your pickle that night. Personally, I do much better in person. I find endless messaging and texting to be tedious, especially since I may or may not even have chemistry with this guy if and when we ever meet in real life. But even I can appreciate the convenience of dating apps and being able to cast a much wider net than you'd be able to do at one bar or one party or whatever. But based on my experiences and the experiences of my friends and other people I've talked to, ask pretty much anyone in the online dating streets and they'll tell you that it sucks. And I have a hypothesis as to what the problem is with dating online. Line. And it's from this problem that nearly all the other accompanying problems stem. To me, the downfall of dating today can be summed up in two words. Endless scroll. The endless scroll is so ingrained in our day-to-day -day experience and how we interact with pretty much all forms of content on the internet. I don't think we really even notice or think about it much anymore, let alone how it changes our thought processes and behaviors. When you're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, your Buzzfeeds, your news sites, whatever it is, these sites implemented endless scroll to keep you on them for as long as possible because the longer you're on there, the more ads, the more personal data collection, which means more money. So the innovation of the endless scroll is actually quite sinister because it trains your brain to always be in this dynamic of looking for something else, for something more. Even if you really, really like this piece of content right here, well then that means there's gotta be something even better if you just keep scrolling, right? So when we apply this behavior and this dynamic to your hinges and your bumbles and your tinders, the content that you're engaging with or choosing not to engage with and you keep on scrolling, it isn't content, it's actual human people. And when there's this perception, either conscious or subconscious, that these human beings are just content that you either like or don't like, then the ensuing interactions begin to change as well. This is why we have behaviors like ghosting becoming so epidemic, really. The fact that this phenomenon is so prevalent that we actually have a term for it it's f***ed up. And to me, it just goes back to this issue of dissociating these dating profiles from being actual people to looking at them as just content or images. Just like people are quick to unfollow or unsub the instant a YouTuber says or does or wears something that they don't like, people now seem to behave extremely similarly in courtship. Um, he said that my favorite movie was overrated, so that's donezo. No explanation given, just ghosts. Add to that the fact that more and more people these days have zero social skills and can't even hold a regular conversation. So many people spend their entire lives on their phones on social media instead of learning how to actually interact with real human beings in society. I generally do not ghost and if I do ghost he was asking for it. I had one guy who turned out to be a flat earther. 
ghost. And I've been ghosted plenty of times and it can feel extremely shitty. Then again, there have been plenty of times where I was dead ass relieved to be ghosted because it spared me an uncomfortable conversation with a guy I wasn't even into anyway. Point is, ghosting isn't just inconsiderate, cowardly, and rude. All things that I strive not to be, ghosting can mess with people's minds. When you get this confusing signaling where one day it seems like things are going really well and then the next day that person vanishes into thin air abruptly, no matter how solid you are in your sense of self, you can't help but wonder, the f*** did I do? Truth is, you may not have done anything. Sometimes it really is just a simple lack of chemistry. It's just that people who ghost tend to be immature, flippant, cowardly individuals who think that it's okay to treat a living, breathing person with feelings as if they're an Instagram post. When I've been ghosted by someone I actually liked, the worst part is that two-day purgatory where you're not 100% sure that you've been ghosted yet, but you strongly suspect that you're being ghosted. Ghosting is emotional terrorism, so I really try not to do it, which has led to me learning to perfect the art of crafting the perfect message to let a guy know politely that I literally never, ever, ever want to see him again, ever. It doesn't feel good to be rejected, nor does it feel good to let someone else down. But unless you're a psycho creep or a flat earther, it seems far crueler to me to leave someone wondering what the hell happened because I know how that feels. Unfortunately, I don't think most people care at this stage in human evolution or regression, if you ask me. Most people who ghost have been ghosted. Hurt people hurt people. These types of behaviors, ghosting or being extremely erratic and binary with either showing interest or showing zero interest, it's all just become normal. You're super attentive and responsive or you ghost. So now it's perceived as acceptable when it really shouldn't be. At this stage, it's more normal to act like a complete lunatic instead of just having the basic manners to let the other party know, hey, I'm not seeing a connection here, but best of luck to you. It's not that hard. Time and time again, I'll hear stories from friends or I've even experienced it myself where people make their moves based on power plays or having the upper hand rather than just being decent to one another. I mean, let's talk about the ways that we even assess whether we want to swipe right or left before we even get to the point of matching, chatting, and then eventually ghosting each other. The longer you're on these apps, the less likely you are to engage with a person's profile in any meaningful way. You wind up swiping through people and again, these are human beings, the same way you'd scroll past an ad on Instagram. I've had my non-single friends ask to look through my matches or my feed, and I get it, they're curious. A lot of them have been partnered since before app dating became a thing. And across the board, the thought, care, and consideration that they'll devote to one bio is far greater, exponentially greater, than what I do as an experienced power user. They look at every photo super carefully, they dissect the bio. Meanwhile, as they're spending more time ruminating on one guy than I would do on my entire day's worth of likes, I'm just sitting over there wondering why they still haven't added a feature to super dislike. How we interact with social media is more or less the same way we interact with our dating feeds. There is little to no thought given to the fact that these people are people. Dating apps treat objects like women, man. Everything is impulse and almost completely thoughtless, like or dislike. One not so flattering photo equals throw the whole person away. Confession, I'm absolutely guilty of this. In my defense, more often than not, that not so flattering photo is serving Carlos Danger type of tease. Leave a hot dog emoji if you remember our good friend, Mr. Danger. Anyway, for someone like such as myself, things are complicated even further by the fact that I make uh, internets and uh, social medias. And I'm not even referring to the stuff that I do in my career behind the scenes for companies. I really mean more this stuff, like this video that you're watching right now. These days, it's pretty much de rigueur for a lot of guys to ask if you have an Instagram or whatever, because I guess they think they're helping to weed out the catfish and the bogus profiles. But that can open up weird doors for those of us who make the YouTubes and the whatnot, because though I have but a modest following, there are plenty of people who only want to leverage their access to me for personal gain. And even without that motive, it creates an uncomfortable imbalance of access to information about me. If some guy I'm dating decides to start digging through my videos or even binging them, 
immediately he has access to a wealth of information about my interests, my opinions, whatever, that I couldn't possibly have about him. Unless he also has a YouTube channel, which no, we're not doing it, non-starter. So to a point, this guy who may or may not be a fucking nut is able to get to know me without me even being involved in the process. It's weird. This is true for anyone who's built a presence on social media in some capacity, and it's why I prefer not to even mention that I made these stupid videos until I've vetted the guy thoroughly, and even then, I've still regretted it retroactively. On the other hand, reverse image searching, high key has us all f***ed regardless, so whatever. Then there's also the exhausting complication of social media etiquette once you actually do exchange handles. You have to deal with who power played whom and didn't follow back or unfollowed or whatever other inane, petty bullshit. It is legit worse than high school. Anyway, I think dating apps, at least as they exist now, are by and large a negative innovation. While I do have friends who are in successful relationships that began on dating apps, I've even been to two or three Tinder weddings, all of my single friends affirm unanimously that the dating app scene is an absolute Nightmare, I'll see myself out. I just feel that by and large, the conflation of our mindset and behaviors with how we engage with content on social media and how we engage with actual human beings on dating apps, it's had a deleterious effect, not just on romance, but on human interaction overall. Being flighty, callous, and unstable is the new normal. It is totally okay to be completely inconsiderate of others and to lack basic manners. I guess I'm saying all this to say, don't be surprised if I become a crazy dog lady in the next few years. That is gonna do it for today, but don't forget to let me know if you guys are keen to see a tea talk where I focus more on the specific issues and challenges that black women face in the dating scene. That's it, but before I get out of here, there's just one more thing I wanna make sure I mention, and that is a reminder to never trust anyone with a Morphe code, or who's a f***ing flat earther. Bye-bye. That's, that's a nappy-headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>